Mr. Derek Johnson, good to see you today. It's been, uh, it's always too long in between. I keep thinking, man, I got to get Derek to tell me what that meant. I just, so you've got a plate full of things to tell uh, us. And I had some, some questions I'm saving for later in case you don't, uh, you don't hit it. But I do have kind of a general kind of a question because you and I were talking off the air. We're in a military occupancy. This country has been since Trump was was in office, right? He, was he When he was still in office, we entered a military occupancy. Is that correct? Would you say it that way? No, but it, it, if you want to open a big can of worms, then, then it's like that way. I tell people all the time, I'm not trying to go straight into advertisement. This thing right here explains it to a T. It's more, yeah. That opens the can. That's the can of worms right here. On a on a condensed level. Okay. You know, you and I talk, and we talk off the screen, as you say, that the few people are, are kind of rustling in their spirit when they hear some of the things I say. Well, yeah. that's because you've never heard you yourself, who members listen, you've never heard this before. So it sounds completely out of nowhere. It's far fetched in a lot of your minds, and that's fine from a certain angle. However. I speak always on behalf of being a veteran. I'm a United States Army veteran retired. I enlisted with a degree, which means I could have gone straight to officer school. I didn't. I enlisted with a degree. However, my mind thinks on the levels of colonels and generals, because if I'd have gone to officer school, if God had another plan for me, let me say it like that. Had God taken me that route, who knows what I would have ranked up to. I would have either... I don't know. I don't know that. I won't ever know that. So I don't like talking the what ifs because I don't I don't what if. But I operate. My mind operates like that. All right. So the average person out there, you're going to go to whomever, you know, that's a veteran. And a lot of them don't know. They don't know because this is an operation that requires laws and orders and orders specifically on federal and military side. And a lot of people don't know that military law is separate. Military is completely separate from the federal government. Completely. Yeah. Right? I, you, I first heard that from you and I thought, oh. oh, really? No, they don't have the same. They don't operate under the same. In fact, when you go into the military, you don't even have the. In some senses, you almost give up certain rights that you and I have. Correct. because they, they got a bus. Well, and I probably use the it's wrong so, term. It's probably not military occupancy. It's probably. A continuity of government would have been a, a, a more. Well, no, no, well, you, you were correct. What, I, what well, I'm saying, though, is a lot of people have heard me talk. The, but they wouldn't have added. They didn't add anything to Donald Trump. Donald Trump got everything organically. Okay. They would have prevented the Democratic National Convention from doing anything to flipping to get our guy. Any other time in history, the Dominion systems didn't just pop up because Donald Trump came in. The Dominion systems has been doing this for a, a long time. OK. And before that, they had other methods of getting their people in. Who is they? The swamp, the cabal, the deep state. All right. The federal corporation. All right. So everybody wants a clean out. But when you present them with the clean out and you're yeah. showing them the laws and order, then it's like, oh, it's far fetched. And that's all conspiracy theory. No, it's not. It's a military operation. And if you're going to believe in military, then you got to believe in our laws and our orders. That is what I'm showing you in place, all the people out there. A military occupation is for lack of what, in layman's terms, rather, it, even though it really is what it is, it is actual martial law. That is what a military occupation is. You're in martial law. Really? Right now. Okay. The president does not have to tell you when we go into martial law. That is false. Anybody that tells you that, that is false. Why would he say, hey, there's an enemy around your house and they're coming to get you? You don't do that. Even if there really was, you don't alert that sound. You operate with what you operate with. You wouldn't. It's the polar opposite of saying, hey, you wouldn't do that. And that's what President Trump told you. So I tell people. If you claim to be a Trump supporter, if you claim that you voted for him the first time, you're going to vote again. You got to listen to the man. Yeah. Everything. But he has to play two narratives right now. He's playing two roles. See, the followers that follow me, they go read the laws and the orders. They they go look up what's in this book because it's all on .gov and .mil sites, and they try to piece it together. Don't mean that they all get it completely, but they try. 
Yeah. Well, what I'm saying to people is that Donald John Trump, he has to play a role. Ninety five percent of America don't know what's in this book. Yeah. They hear propaganda news and oh, the. No, no, no. That's all a bunch of drama. Is it real? Absolutely. But there's a there's a way there's a formula of how we correct that. That's already been put into place. That's the military occupation. A military occupation sets this parameter. Right. And then the continuity of operations is for the federal side. That's for the three branches of government. And there's actual legislation for that. It's called the continuity directives, federal continuity directives one and two. And there's been eight, I think about seven or eight publications under those. The most recent one was in December 2023, just a few months ago. And the whole publication is about Donald Trump's executive order 13961, the federal mission resilience strategy. From 2021 to 2023, every publication under the umbrella, the two main publications, every single one of those has not one single piece of legislation by Joe Biden in them. If Joe really? is the president, he should have legislation in one of those publications of a continuity of operations. He does not. Now, do, do, do I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt because I want to get no, this in okay. here. For those that are new, this is like, for those that are new, I'm going to ask this question. Yeah. Do the, all the congressmen and senators and the Supreme Court that were all there in that, uh, 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 what do we call it, the State of the Union, that whole place was packed out. Do all of those congressmen and senators and uh, Supreme Court justices do they all know and accept that we're yes. in continuity of operations? Okay, yes. that's one fact that I want to make sure everyone realizes. Everybody knows we're in this martial law scenario that you saw there. They and they zoom they zoom in on one guy the other night, key guy. They zoom in on a guy standing there with with Joe Biden when he walked in. His little his little label. Yeah. U S U S Marshal. They saw that, and right. that means so, what? Well, once again. Everything that everybody's watching is a military occupation. All of these congressmen and women, not all of them in the sense of who's playing a role and who isn't, but they would have been given a plea deal way back whenever to play a role out. Okay. okay. And to play these roles out. That's what a continuity of operations is. It requires distractions of the people while the military is doing their thing because that's separate. And then when you read those federal continuity directives, they have these things called National Essential Functions. They acronym it, NEFs, National Essential Functions. And they have a bullet point list of what NEFs are in these publications. And it would take forever for me and you to go through them. That's why right. I tell people, I give you the nuggets to go look it up. And I do it in a chronological order. And, and like you said, anybody see my previous videos, you have to find one of my videos that does the, uh, the, the 40,000 foot view up first. Yeah. Yeah. Then I go down to the field level and then I go down to the ground level. Well, I um, want everybody to get that but, book and we're going to show it several times. Make sure you guys show that book but, if you, if we have a graphic so that people will order this. But uh, the only other thing I'm going to, uh, there it is, the Midnight Rider. You wrote this. It's fairly new out. You can still order that. And then you guys put that website on and how they order. Do they go to Amazon or they order straight from you, Derek? Well, if they want it signed by me, you order straight from me, and it's also cheaper that way. If you want it on Kindle, am, uh, like a computer, phone, whatever, then you can go to Amazon. And if you're international, that's the only way to get it is through Amazon for international. The okay. paperback. And be sure to put the, his website. I'm not seeing it. Right. There you go. Rattletrap1776.com. And, okay, the, uh, then the only other thing I want to point out, and then I'm going to just let you turn, turn you loose, Derek, is – you're absolutely saying, mm -hmm. and we have, we've agreed every single time you've come on. He's, he's an a, actor. Okay. And for people who are new, yeah, you're gonna go. You're gonna put me right <laughs> yeah. up. You're gonna put me right on into the one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I know. However, I learned a lot of this stuff from my grandfather, also my great uncles. I had a great uncle who was a Purple Heart at Normandy. I, I learned a lot of this from my dad's buddies. I had it. My dad had a. Uh, it's still living, but best friend who was Secret Service for 35 years, Jacqueline Kennedy's bodyguard. All right. I learned a lot of this by talks that they couldn't just talk about. And long before we had cell phones that could listen in. So I've heard a lot of conversations and a lot of information through the years that I paired with my experience and what I've read and put together via legislation. 
I don't work on conspiracy theories. I work on legislation that you can tangibly put your hands on. Yeah. All right. Now I can discern something that I might think is real versus what may be a theory or whatnot, but I use legislation. Everything I talk about, you can tangibly put your hands on that book is it wrote itself. I wrote it, but that's all Donald Trump's laws and orders, chronological order of how they pulled this off. It's also has forwards in there by retired full bird, Colonel retired, former deputy commander of the force, uh, Colonel Charles Chuck Sellers, and also a forward from retired Lieutenant Colonel Ricardo Bosi from the Australian forces, special operations. All right. And they do a forward and then they do major pieces in the back of how the generals would have pulled it off because one of them was only one step away from a brigadier and the other was two steps away. Well, so, well. you know, and I have other colonels coming on board. I have others that are going to contribute uh, a major Jim O'Connor from uh, West Point. A brilliant, brilliant man. He has a podcast now. Uh, just started a podcast at 73 years young. Um, and, uh, wow. you know, there's a lot of people that I talked to AJ Roberts, a British veteran, also Brad Wozni, a Canadian veteran. I have a lot of people that, that are veterans. So, uh, but you know, if you have hearing it for the first time, it's going to sound new. That's fine. Yeah. You're right where you need to be, but it's not new. And it was government and exiles where countries came up under the, the, the rule. And I hate to use the word rule, but they came under the authority of larger countries like us with our militaries and their presidents at fell under rank of Roosevelt kind of deal. All right. If you need our help, then here's what we need. We need your military. And we need them when we need them. And it's just a puppet state. And matter of fact, in the forties, we brought the Philippines president from the Philippines over to DC and they put a puppet in place in the Philippines and a lot of the press over there thought he was the actual president. He wasn't. President Kazan was in D.C. under Roosevelt. And they knew it the whole time. But that showed how much humbleness that Kazan had at that time because the greater thing that was at stake. Wow. That is what's going on right now. They pulled Donald Trump back. All right. He's still in command, but he delegated the military. The generals are running this show right now. All right. And the De Department of Defense. They all know what's going on. And the DOJ, a lot of them, they're, they're all Donald Trump mentioned the three letter agencies in the fact of giving highlight to them. And he said they're not bad agencies. It's the leadership in them that were bad. Okay. That's what they're cleaning out. You know, so, by the way, one thing real quick. And Emily, you look up that picture that we show here almost every time. It shows the left on the right. The real the real. Yeah, I've never known of anybody change their earlobe. <laughs> I've never heard of any female in my life that said, I don't like my earlobe like this. I think I want an attached now. All right. Not knocking on the ladies out there, but I'm just saying ladies are the ones who stand an hour or two in front of a mirror. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Right. And there's no problem with that. We'll wait. Y'all say it's five <laughs> minutes, but we'll wait. It'll be an hour. But we get it. But, you know, well, hold on to the ladies that know their ladies, to the women who know their ladies out there. You know, <laughs> just, we're in keep that era. just keep right. shoveling. Just keep we're, shoveling. We're, we're in that. We're in that era. Yeah, I'll dig yeah. a hole. because I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not married, so I'll just keep digging right now. There so, you anyway. go. OK, <laughs> but but yeah, it, it it's and but it's getting. See, the thing is, though, is when one person, when a person rather questions one lie. Or false anything. They got to question everything after that. Yeah. So a lot of people are afraid of learning the truth because when they question that one thing, then they got to question everything is what they think. Yeah. All right. But getting to the state of the union like that, that, that address, first off, that's not the first one. So to a guy like me, it's a well old machine now. And it, it, the, the one last year should have been just as obvious. But now, you know, this one should be even more obvious. Uh, by the comms he made for the people who do follow me, he opened it up brilliantly with one of the things that I repeat all the time. So once people watch me, they'll go, he's so repetitive. And I'm like, yeah, but law and order doesn't change until it changes. Now, the biggest thing I have with my followers is, and it's not all my followers, but the biggest thing I get is I can't see this stuff being enforced. And I'm like, because you don't know the laws and orders yet. When you know the laws and orders and what a law is supposed to do and how it's supposed to look enforced, you'll be able to see it because something is happening daily that's being enforced. Yeah. All right. But then you got to think militarily. 
you got to get tough a little bit. But once again, we got to this place in history because all of our ancestors didn't do anything about what they were supposed to be doing. We're the government. Congress works for us. That's why they called representatives. The root word is represent. They represent us. It ain't supposed to be the other way around. So we got here. So we got to get tough right now. And you got to think outside the box right now. And if you really wanted a clean system, then guess what? It was going to require a lot of crap. It was going to require a lot of, of uncomfortableness and a lot of different things because it. President Trump told you once again, 45 says it all the time. He said, you just don't realize how deep the swamp really was. He says all that. I don't say that. I take his torch for him and say it for him because he's already paved the way. That's what that book is. It's a paved the way. So the, spe the speech of the night, the very first thing is my fellow Americans. All right. And he goes, Roosevelt came to this podium in January 1941. What's the very thing? Anybody who watches me, what do I talk about all the time? 1941 and Roosevelt. Roosevelt told Congress. He didn't ask Congress. He told them, if you don't do something, I will. Who do you think the military generals are going to listen to? Me, the commander in chief, or you, the Congress? So Congress wrote the first War Powers Act, which gave the president the authority to send the troops into war. All right. So you don't have to debate that. You don't have to like it. But if you don't like it, it's going to take two thirds of states votes or two thirds of Congress votes to change that. They did change that in 1973. But they even edited it even more. They amended it even more where the president has 48 hours to alert Congress that he's sending troops in the hostility. The president can most certainly send our troops into war, into hostility. The president can, not Congress. I know what the Constitution says, but the Constitution left that open. It did leave that open. Mm. But what, what people have a problem with is the Constitution, when our founders wrote that, they wrote it to be amended. To, to be a man, it wasn't supposed to sit as it sat, all right? It sits beautifully and it is the foundation, but it never was supposed to sit just like that. It was written to be, you know, expanded upon and they've done that. Now you don't have to like what Congress did in 1973, but that's what they did. So with that calm coming out, which means that the White Hats essentially wrote that for him, if you could put it that way, what are they wanting us to be aware of? With that line, every everything that people are seeing is under the military occupation. Everything. Always, I tell people everything. all the time. Every time you see something, it's all it's always the military doing it. It's the military generals, though. Strategically, we're not talking about boots on the ground, that kind of military. We're talking about strategic. All right. So there's always going to be casualties of war. We're losing soldiers. Aircrafts are, are it's mainly aircrafts that are their intakes are getting clogged and they're crashing. Uh, but once again, there's there's aircraft fault. And we're losing soldiers. They are lo they're losing their lives in a wartime situation. Donald John Trump, where you know this, is you go to the, the War Powers Act, once again, 1973 War Powers Act. Section 1550 was not there until the Congress put it there. But that's Donald John Trump. The date in there says December the 20th, 2019. That's Donald John Trump. All right. And it says every 180 days thereafter, it says the first 180 days, this will happen. And then 180 days thereafter. In that first 180 days, Donald John Trump federalized one million reserve co components to active duty. I don't care that it was March 27, 2024, almost four years ago. Until that order is revoked, revised or rescinded or mission accomplished, that order is intact. It is active. It is ongoing. All right. And that's military. That's not federal. That's military. It was an executive order, but he also put a military command in there. So that's when there's there's how they pair in there. He put it in an executive order. There's a federal. But he when he activated, when he federalized one million reserves, that was a direct order from the commander in chief to his military. All right. He holds that command until otherwise. So that calm that 1941. I don't know how they're going to do all this. I saw an article today that said that, that we're taking all our C-17s and um, I think maybe our C-130s. I'd have to go back and look. I know C-17s were one of them, and we're making them in. And then he got awarded. He got the key to the Ooh, city and all wow. this other stuff. He didn't do that for that. He did that because he was trained in that situation. I know I can take that guy out and took him out. All right. So 
it's little things like that that people have to apply. I always speak from a military standpoint. So if you want to know what's going on, you can, but you've got to be able to turn and off everything And you made a real important point about Trump. What Trump is doing, what the whole operation is doing, one of the big things you said is to, is to prevent a civil war by giving us enough comms to let us know what's going on. Is that one way to say it? They're giving us enough information about what's well, everything, really happening. Everything he says has a, it, like in the Army, especially the Army, yeah. we have acronyms. Every, every acronym means something. Yeah. Uh, but we use acronyms that way it's quicker to say it. That way you yeah. don't have to walk around and go on da 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 da. You just say boop, and that, that one word means that big phrase. So, uh, so I'll I'll play that into that like this. So Biden the other night he plagiarized the whole time. He said, "Buy American." I'm gonna I'm all about buy American, America first. He said everything that Trump says. So that's plagiarism. He said we're gonna increase education. Listen to what he said the other night. He said, on my first day in office, excuse me, <laughs> on your first day in office? Here Why do you need a first day in office? You don't need a first day in office. You're already, quote, unquote, in office. So he told, he was right after that. He said, on my first day in office, da, 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 then he went on. And then on an uh, hour and 13 minutes, that was an hour and 12. And on hour 13, I do things by time. Hour 13, he goes, Send me a bill on the border. I will fix it. He don't need a bill on the border, ladies and gentlemen. If he is president, he don't need a bill. He don't need an act. He don't need anything. That is his role as president. He don't need a bill. All right. And then also, it is his role to enforce the laws that Congress legislates. All right. So once again, if he was legit president, he is the head of state governments and he is the head of the federal government. That is what an executive branch, the president's role is, and to enforce law. He doesn't legislate law. He can write an executive order. Ladies and gentlemen, if Congress won't do something, all he has to do is write an executive order. How come he hadn't done it? So the on my first day in office, huge come. Huge, huge, huge come. He's telling you I'm not president. He's telling you without telling you. Now, that's for people who are listening and paying attention to detail who know where to go find all this and, stuff. And by the way, I'm sure you'll probably point this out later, but there was no presidential seal on that. Uh, did you notice that? There was no presidential seal on the front of the of the State of the Union. It was missing. It's supposed to be there if he's president. Well, and see, the other thing that pulls this in, that, that, that and this is where you get people. I was just looking yesterday, what statistic of people read their Bible daily? 11% of Christians. Daily read their Bible. That's that's a bad number. Hmm. That's I mean, yeah, that's 36 million people, 36 yeah. million people. All right. The reason why I bring that up is also I always say all the time, 68 percent of people. 68 percent can't even name the three branches of government. So how many people are going to know to go look this stuff up? How many people are going to know what to look for? How many people? So that's why I tell people it ain't just me. There's a couple of us out there. I'm the one that does all the laws and orders as fast as you can think of it. Uh, but all these things that you witnessed the other night in that speech, it was all laying out. Now, I, like I said, I don't know what's coming because I'm not a part of that opera. I don't know. I know what they give us. Yeah. When the nuggets fall, then I know. I don't know what they're setting up to. But I know for a fact that what we're about to talk about, the question you're going to ask me, I know that 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 it all ties into something five months back. Five months ago, something happened. It was, it was a quote. It was a saying. And everybody said, well, what's that mean? What did, what did he mean by that? And I'm like, I'm telling you, military occupation means this. And to bring in that other point really quick right there is that you'll hear people who want to argue the Constitution doesn't say that. And I'm like, have you read the Constitution? It most certainly does say that. So when people say, what does a seal not being on something mean? When you're in military occupation, ladies and gentlemen, the Constitution does not matter anymore. It matters from the standpoint that we're not going away from it. But right now you're under a military occupation. The Constitution can be suspended. Governor Abbott of Texas just said this a few weeks ago. That if he has to, he will suspend the Constitution. Really? Right? Really? I didn't and hear everybody, that. Well, 
And everybody, I'm like, that. we've been saying that. I know other people have been saying it. There's a couple of us have been saying it. That, ladies and gentlemen, it is called the suspension clause. You can go Google that when you get off of here, or if you can simultaneously look, it is called the suspension clause. It is most certainly in our Constitution. When the law cannot be enforced, the Constitution can be suspended. But I can show you where we've been in occupation for eight years versus what wow. Governor Abbott's talking about for Texas only. That's just bringing visualization and comms and optics back to it again uh, for people to know that that the people in Texas, for the people who aren't completely awake once again. You were saying right? that that happened, that what they did in Texas this last week, illustrated by by who was there and how they acted, that, that they saw President... Uh, uh, okay, so... Yeah, talk about that. Who, that that right there is going to answer. I know you got a little backlash from something I said the last show. And that's, well, with that's the backlash, fine. I'll just say the backlash was people said, I don't believe that he, he went along the Texas border. I don't believe it's really... Uh, you had kind of said most of the problems were solved along the Texas side. You didn't address California, I don't think. So someone wrote me today and said, yeah, but I'm in the California sector. It's a mess over here. So I had to ask you about that. And you said that you were going to bring that up then. Uh, um, I don't know how bad or not bad the Texas border is, but uh, I, I don't know what, what report to believe. But anyway, go ahead and talk about that. So I think I need to close my blind. Yeah, what does it say? That. Direct light is hitting. Yeah, go ahead and Wait, close yeah. your blind. It's making you look um, something. <laughs> Vince hit his face directly. Oh, she's good eye there, Emily. Let's see. There, there, we there, go. there you go. Now you're real. Now you can be relaxed. We got a little. Now I got to get position again. Now I got to get there, position again. There you go. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So talk about all that border border stuff and how what they did in Texas illustrates that that President Trump is President Trump right now. Well, because. The border is a it, here. Here's the it, people hear the border. Yeah. 99 percent of people who are talking about the border ain't ever been to the border. All right. I have. I've been there. I've driven that bad boy from Texas all the way to California. Oh, you yeah. have. Right? Okay. I've, I've seen every entrance point. OK, now it's kind of like what Donald Trump has to do right now in a military occupation and the continent of operation. There has to be distractions. Because not everybody's going to understand what's going on like I understand it. So it, and that that's the goal is to get people to understand the government, how the government functions and operates, and what it's supposed to do, what it ain't supposed to do, et cetera. That is the goal that we're trying to all achieve here. Is that, or that's what I'm trying to achieve is get people to understand that. Like here's here's what you've been taught your whole life. That's false. All right, sorry, but that's false. That's not how it works. Not how it operates. Donald Trump has to appeal to those people over here to get people to still vote because that's your constitutional right. Go out and vote. It's how you make your voice known, your First Amendment, et cetera. All right. But if your First Amendment doesn't back the Constitution, you're also in trouble because if mine does, mine trumps yours, all pun intended. That's how that works. All right. Now, the border thing, same situation. Anytime you have a port, what we call a port of entry or right, an entrance point, meaning a place that you can come over, show your identification card of why you're supposed to be in this country or if I'm supposed to go to Mexico, as I call it, but Mexico, whatever port of entry and whichever way someone's going, there's always going to be something, all right? It's never going to be 100% completely cleaned out where it's perfect because you're always going to have what? You're always going to have people trying to do what? Beat the system, beat the law, or, or do something illegal. We've proven that in history. The 1920s moonshine whiskey mm. just whiskey you got to go look at the border that thing is beautiful that fence is beautiful like you ain't never seen it's big and it's proud and it's awesome all right so you you can't do all this i've already done all this i've already gone down there a long time ago it's there it's intact it's beautiful what he's talking about are policies all right the other thing is this you have to listen to him Every time he speaks about the border somewhere in there, while everybody's processing this great line that a speechwriter put in there, he always hits that central casting right after it. Yeah, this he does. Casting. He's always talking All about right. the right out of central cast, casting. The only thing 
everyone central cast online, ladies and gentlemen, search engine optimization, SEO, how we operate now on Google. The first thing that pops up, the leading background actor agency in the nation. All right. What lead actors, background actors. All right. Then at CPAC last year, Donald Trump called out Tom Homan, who was probably the most lethal ICE agent in history. He says, Tom, where's Tom at? Where's he at? He's looking for him in the crowd. There he is. Central casting. All right. What do you think? How many of the people that don't know what I know are sitting there going, dang, Tom Homan, central casting. Oh, yeah, baby. Do they know what that means? No, they don't. He wasn't saying Tom is central casting. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Homan is the most lethal ICE agent in history that worked for Donald Trump. He ran the most proficient border we've ever had. Guess who you want in an operation to make it look like the same thing? You want him there. All of what you're seeing, all these people are dressed better than I am trying to come over. They're in great outfits. All right. They're not poor, dirt poor Haitians like the media tells you about. You got to listen to the man. And, and you're saying that when Trump said 15 million people, he's let 15 million people over here. You're saying he, they haven't really let 15 million people over that actual border. What they're doing is get all the people who have no clue what's going on. If you're still getting riled up, mad at me and mad at whatever, then you you still are not awake. You don't know what's going on legally, lawfully, and by legislation if you're getting upset. Because all I'm doing is telling what Donald Trump says. I know what central casting means. I know what all the laws say and what they're doing. And then they're taking them, and they took all them people like Governor Abbott did, and they took them to a sanctuary city. They did that on purpose because – sanctuary cities are the ones that said we'll welcome you in we'll take all the illegals in well when they send them there and they make them rile up and and then you know do protests and do all these things and tear stuff up all of a sudden the mayors of them cities are trying to get them out and trying to do things of that nature write laws that they can't go there no 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 why are you trying to write a law that they can't be here you're the one that vocalizing on tv that you want them there so that's the drama side that has to wake the people up so if you're still over there going what are they doing here run, 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 run. And you're not looking at laws and orders. If you want to have a peaceful, calm spirit and you want to know what's going on like myself, then you got you, there's a way to do that. That book with the laws and orders or the documents.info. If you can't afford the book, there's no problem. I got a website up that still has enough on there to get you started to figure it all out. But you have to want to study that. You have to want to go read that. And there's you have to want to go to piece that. that together. So what happened in Texas on February 29th? Most beautiful validation and vindication in the world. If I was seeking validation, I got it. I already knew it, though, because it's a military occupation. And being a military veteran, I don't need validation. I already know what's going and what's at stake. And it's for everybody. It ain't for me. But if I was seeking validation, I got mine on February 29th. Donald John Trump went down to Eagle Pass, Texas. He got off the plane. He walked up to the camera just like president and he goes, there's a situation at the border. We're going to go fix it. Hmm. What are you doing down there? Former president. What are you going to do about it? Former president, former Donald Trump. What are you doing down there? All right. That's going to play into what I'm about to show you. All right. Then he goes down to Del Rio, Texas. What was the most talked about city in Texas throughout 2021, 2022? Del Rio, Texas. If you Google that, CNN and Politico, they have articles that say Del Rio, Texas is the hottest spot of Texas, not Brownsville. On February 29th, same day, Brownsville, Texas. All right. Guess what was not there? Air Force One was not there. There were two C-32 uh, Air Force Two type aircraft there, not Air Force One, ladies and gentlemen. All right. <laughs> so guess how far Brownsville is from Del Rio? 379.2 miles. All right. Nowhere near the hottest topic in the news. But that's not the best part. The best part is Donald Trump gets to Del Rio. He's standing there. There's the most beautiful optic validation vindication you can ever see, especially if you're a veteran. And you should know this. We all all veterans listening right now. We all raised our right hand to the same title 10. 10 U.S. Code. Title 10. 10 U.S. Code Section 502. That's where the oath is found. All right, Title 10, very important. Donald Trump's standing there, and he goes, well, 
I was shown this operation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a military operation. It's a military operation. He said it twice. He just told the whole world that you're in a military operation. Now, he wasn't talking about just the state of Texas, and here's why. There was a rank structure there. What I was looking at was Donald John Trump, the governor of Texas, and the adjutant general made an appearance. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, was everything that you needed to see that Donald John Trump is a wartime president by law and order because of this right here. And I'm going to read it for you just specifically. That way I have it specifically and accurately just for you because I don't want to mess it up. Because when you go there and read it, you're going to see it. The adjutant general is the senior military officer of a state's commonwealths or territories military forces, including the National Guard, the Army National Guard, and the Air National Guard, the Naval Militia, and any, keyword there, any state defense forces. This, this, this officer is known as the AG or the TAG, which means the adjutant general, and reports, get ready for it, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. He reports to the state's chief executive when the National Guard is not in a federalized status under Title 10. And there is the first time they have shown the adjutant general on national TV with the governor of Texas. And guess who's with him? Had Donald Trump not been there, then you would know that it's a state operation. Because the adjutant general, it just told you right there, once again, let me read it again. The, the adjutant general report reports to the state's chief executive. Who's that? The governor. When the National Guard is not in a federalized status under Title 10. There's that Title 10. We raised our right hands to veterans. Where you at, vets? All right. So they're showing you for the first time, they show the adjutant general, the governor, and Donald Trump together. At one time, that showed you who's in command, all right? Because, ladies and gentlemen, just a couple of weeks ago, the Texas National Guard, Texas has their own guard. They have, they call it Texas Guard, all right? We have our own guard. I'm a Texan too, but we have our own guard. It's called the Texas Guard, all right? So they put a flag up on top of the headquarters that said, come and take it, all right? Everybody's <laughs> seen that before. So they told, they told the Federal Border Patrol, you step foot near that border too, we'll lasso you up just like those immigrants, <laughs> right? So this, that's all off. The biggest thing, now let me show you something. Let me show you a little extra. This is your bonus right here. It's your little nugget that I was talking about on Donald Trump's part. Do you think Donald Trump would go against his word? Do you, go, do you think he'd go against his very law he put into place? I don't think so. That's what that showed everybody just a couple, it, well, Friday be two weeks ago. That's why, once again, I say all the time, if I could take a USB cord and plug it into my brain and my heart <laughs> and make people get the knowledge, but also feel that, that I, that makes me feel woo, like I did in, in a good way, right? Yeah. I could, I can't run anymore because of all my, my military injuries, but if I could run, I'd be running down the road going, whoo, maybe like, you know, like that, because, that's what everybody just watched. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, Derek, you know, when I, the thing that trips my brain up is that even though once I grasp we're in military occupation, we're in devolution in different terms that are used. And so then everybody's playing a part. I, I'm getting that more every single time you come on. And then I'm going, am I, are we, Derek, and this is the honest <laughs> question, are we the people? Are we just being foolish when we get because he's just playing a part? Are we yeah. wasting anger? Yes, you're okay. wasting energy. Okay. It's, it's, wasting, it's wasting energy. It's wasting time away from your family, your friends, the things that matter to you. If you got a dog, go walk it. Like it, you're, The mainstream media is under a code, too. They have wartime codes as well. Everything has a code when a president becomes a wartime president. And that's uh, 47 U.S. Code 606. But everything, even on the other side of things, I tell people, and I, we won't say the word, obviously, on here, but people who use the, the, the little acronym FJB, we know what yeah, that stands yeah, for. Right. That, that makes you even more, 
my opinion. I got it. It makes you more ignorant because you wouldn't have to say that because right. that in all reality, we shouldn't want to, to damn anybody. Right. Period. There's a way to live and let live on both sides of the aisle because there's nothing you can do to make some people believe the way you believe. And you shouldn't want to. You shouldn't you shouldn't want to make somebody believe the way you believe. What I think of as a Christian and myself is, is I walk around, I live the life that I feel like I'm supposed to live. If somebody sees that, they're going to be like, man, why are you? They do. They'll say, why are you so positive all the time? Why are you so happy all the time? Why are you always this? Why does when something breaks out, you're cool, calm, and collected? Because I'm like, because I know, one, who's in control. Two, I also know what's going on right now. Uh, and and if you want that peace, you know, and I, I said, can, like you, can you talk about this then? Cause so, so that those points are really well made. Then you and I, uh, before we came on, we're talking about even with everything we're talking about, he's an actor, they're playing a part. They're, they're both sides are giving you qualms because they're, they're, the whole thing is being is an operation. And yet somehow at the same exact time, there are real battles. I suffer the same way in a different manner. I'm not rich. People think because you go viral and you have a book that you're filthy rich and you don't have expenses and you don't have other things. They, did, they just don't realize that I'm not rich by any stretch of the margin. I live paycheck to paycheck just like everybody else does. I have to go budget daily. I have to look at my bank account and go, oh, you know, I don't know. I have to do that stuff. So I have to watch what gas I put in my vehicle and where I can go with it and what I can do with it. Um, so, you know, there's people suffering all over the world. But how did we get here? Nobody yeah. wants to focus on how we got here. Everybody wants to complain about that. But they don't want to see how do we fix that and get out from under it. And then we don't try not to get back here again. See, because the dollar right now, it ain't even worth it ain't even worth hardly a quarter. All right. So how yeah. did that happen? See, yeah. if the dollar was worth what it's supposed to be, we wouldn't have a suffering that we have. And that's what we're fixing right now. But we have to go through some hard times in order to get to the other side and then look back. When you get on that mountain view and look back down at that valley you just came through, then you go, man, it was what rough, you, but it was what, worth it. What can do you know or suspect? Because I know there's a lot of things people think you do know, and you're you're watching the comms like everybody else. The difference is you can read them almost instantaneously. Lee, and we, we have to say, oh, tell sure. me what comes because I, I miss them every time. But the moment you <laughs> explain it to me, I go, oh, that makes sense. Um, and I know other people who, who, who just spend hours with these really hard to understand comms and numbers. And I'm thinking, I just don't have time for that. But tell me something that's obvious that they did. But where do you see us going? OK, there's supposedly supposedly a 2024 election that's supposed to happen. Uh, depending on who you ask, depending on which patriot you ask, I even heard General Flynn make a comment about if there's enough Black Swan events, there's a scenario. Did you hear General Flynn say that? And what are your thoughts about that? Uh, when did he? When did he say it? I, well, it was played. On, I happened to hear it played uh, on a couple of Patriot channels. I think Phil Goodleski played it, and I had heard it before, so I don't know if it was a couple of weeks ago or a month or two ago, but he said there are scenarios where if uh, there was a couple, a black swan event or, or even a couple that there might not be a 2024 election. He just said, I heard his, it's his voice. And I saw one of the videos with him saying, it. had you heard that at all? Well, the black swan, there was an article that came out not long ago from, a, um, I think it was Politico or one of those that, that, someone had had made a comment about a black swan for 2025 uh but or or that i can't i have to go look it up i have yeah. it but you know my thing is without knocking people what i yeah. find a lot of what i find a lot of is that there are a lot of these people out there talking have no military background experience now i see now you can know what's going on without being military so there's a there's one of those yeah. where you split you got to split the hair and understand what i'm saying yeah, a lot of people are are saying stuff that just wouldn't even. Look. My dad, we were just having this conversation this afternoon. The world's not going to stop. The military is going to bust in, and the world stops, and everything pauses, and then everybody gets an answer. It's a continuity for a reason. Life goes on. The same thing with these blackouts you hear. We can black out places in the military you never know about it, and we can black it out, and it would have happened 
and you wouldn't have known about it. And we get in and operate something, and then it, the power grid would be back on in 20, 30 minutes. And, and it, that that time period, you wouldn't know that. All right. So just like the AT and T down the other day, yeah. Uh, if fa- Facebook goes down. Uh, there's things that we can do in the military, uh, and I say we. I'm talking about massive. There's so many units in the military, but I'm talking about we as a massive whole. There's so much stuff that military can do that the average person would never even that know what's going on. So a lot of these things people are taking, and they're taking it from people they, that that might have had the experience, but they don't really break down what they what that entails. See, when people hear the word military, they just think of their cousin who was a private first class right, in right. Louisiana. They yeah. don't they don't see it's a lot of levels to it, but that's why everybody has a role in life to play. Yeah. So these black these big words that people hear uh, are, have been portrayed a little slightly out of context. Well, bottom um, line, then, uh, but, Derek, what do you feel? Do you feel like we're headed to uh, an election in 2024 and Donald John Trump's going to be reelected for real this time without what, what are your thoughts? Well, well, here's the first thing people need to look at is how come there's not the no- everybody living right now, yeah. especially if you're 40 years old or older like me. So I'm 41. So if you're 40 and older, you have witnessed in your lifetime a bunch of candidates and then a bunch of debates. Where is that? Now, they had a couple. Sure. But they were playing roles. DeSantis and, and Nikki Haley. All right. And then the Democratic National Convention. 78 percent it's 74 78 somewhere in there percent of democrats say they why is the democratic national convention riding with him why would they why would they pick a loser think about that why would they pick someone that now they're going to still vote for him because that's what democrats do they will do it if that's their dog and their pony that they're going to yeah. ride with they'll vote sure yeah. but the data shows that why would they pick him knowing that all right and if they knew that they had it if they well if they knew they didn't have a chance against Trump, why would they pick a horse that ain't going to win? All right. So you got to look at those little things, stuff that you have seen and how the operations work in a normal situation. So President Trump tells everybody, he said 2024 will be our final battle, our final battle. He said on an MMA, he had a, a, one of those little MMA fighters oh, right. uh, he was yeah. sitting there and talking to. He was talking to one of them a couple months back. And he said this, shows military occupation right here. He goes, well, I think 2024 can be bigger or as big as 2016. I don't really know. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, it's going to be much bigger. And he goes, well, because it won't be tradition. And he stops. Oh, he did. Because it won't be tradition. And then he goes, <laughs> he deflects. He goes, he said, well, he was going to say traditional. Like, it won't be a traditional election, ladies and gentlemen. All right. He's telling you. Fox News, CNN all told you 2018, 2020, 2022 that the National Guard were at all the precincts all over the country. So they already told you we're in a military occupation. The the capitulation tour where Donald Trump went around the world, that's in the Chapter 11 of the Law of War Manual, getting countries to surrender. And then he tells you this, that it won't be a tradition. And then he stops, <laughs> traditional. All right. 2024 will be our final. And then he says this, because then we will be able to show everybody the results and also what they did under their rule. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and that, you said the rule rule is a British term though, because the oh. crown, a rule. Oh right? we're we're not we don't rule over here. Our presidents don't rule, right? So that was another com. That we what will be able to show what they what did. What does that com mean then? What what would that mean? 1871 organic act eighteen seventy one and also organic act eighteen seventy eight. Organic oh. act eighteen seventy one was when Ulysses S. Grant signed us back under the yeah, ground. 1878, out, 1878 is when we became the federal corporation. Now, now a minute ago, you said, uh, I, I, this, I, I didn't think to ask you this question, but since you brought it up, so you said Nikki Haley was playing a part. So so it was it was almost easy for most of us to kind of start hating on Nikki. But if she's just playing a part, there's no reason for us to, <laughs> there's no, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not sticking up for hating on anybody, but I'm saying, if it was just a part to 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 create the scenario that we needed to see, then maybe she's maybe she's just one of the good guys. What what are your thoughts? Well, what on that? what what people have to get back to is this: I don't know you personally enough to judge you. If I started talking about you all of a sudden, well, you could either it could either hurt you or it could you know whatever sure. how do you would perceive it, but. I, I don't know you. So how sure. can I judge you? Right. 
Yeah. And and why why would I talk about someone I don't even know? And see what people tend to do is because someone's famous or popular, oh, it's okay to talk about them. No, it's not. We I have a heart, I have a brain, I have a family, I have a mama. My mom, it she still has trouble with it. She has trouble with the that's my you're my baby though. They're talking about my baby. And I'm like, it's okay, mom. Yeah, you it's just okay. Don't if say I, can, me, I, I remember her calling. If I can you handle it, you know, I if I can had, handle it, you can, you, you know. But call, you got called out for some language in those early dates. I remember your mom called and you. So, out. <laughs> yeah, and I and I always apologize. I was, I'm sorry, I got I got, Go I ahead, got but but you know, so what people need to get back into is that look. Handle what you can handle where you are in your life, no matter what that is. And if, if you can handle a lot of stuff, great. But right now, there's enough evidence to show you there's a, a military operation going on. And yeah. until Donald Trump and the people who are in that situation, who have proven to you by actions, not words, they have proven by actions. When they show you someone is bad, then you can. You and my dad used to tell me this is a country saying right here about the throw on you. But my dad used to tell me all the time. I'd say. Are you sure? I questioned. Are you sure about that? And I'll be 15. 16. I was already treading on water doing that. But, <laughs> but he goes, son, if I tell you a chicken dip snuff, go check under her wing. <laughs> and I walked That's around like, what is, what is happening? Oh, uh, man, like, you country boys have you know, the best expressions. I mean, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and now, nowadays, I'll still accidentally like, are you sure about that or something? And he'll go. <laughs> <laughs> he don't have to tell me the slang it. He just, oh, he'll just he'll play the song. There you go. You know where to go check, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And I, and so, you know, so it, it, it's that right there that, that I try to tell people, look, worry about what you can worry about. Don't focus on all these extremities because all it does is get you riled up. It's drama. Yeah. It's negative. It's all these things that you could have put somewhere else, something positive to your friends, your family, your kids, your, your grandkids, your dog, whatever it is, your garden, something that, that brings you joy. All right. Yeah. Now there is an operation. You should want to know what's going on, but yeah. that's legislation. Legislation has been in place. since our foundation. That's why it matters. But all the other stuff don't. So with things like that, that's what I tell people is that I don't know you, even though we're on here, I don't know you enough that I would go out there and go, oh, that, 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 or whatever, right? So people need to quit judging. Now, when I was down with President Trump, the first, first or second time, I can't remember, but I, I had a, I had just put a post up and it was, <laughs> it got a lot of views and a lot of people were sharing it. But, and I just said, yeah, I, here's another country thing, you know, I mean, it's just, it's me, it's, it's, it's a little, it's a little whatever, but it, it ain't too bad. But I just I put a post up of CPAC and Nikki Haley's audience, and there's like ten people in the room, yeah. and they show the, the the big the big panoramic view. All right, and uh, and I said I put a post up said Nikki Haley can't sell a do a, a dog turd to a lawnmower, right? <laughs> and and they showed that they showed it to him, and he said I I want to retweet that so bad, but I'll get hammered for that one. But he did take the picture. And put something else of it, and I can, you know, prove it to the day the day I had it and the day he did it. But he didn't say it exactly like mine because he can't he can't do my he can't endorse me right now like that because well, my right. stuff gives too much, right? Well, and that's you know, what I, I don't know. People. I mean, I think I, I think about and you, your point. I know you're a Christian man. In fact, I was going to ask you about your. I'm going to ask you that because I actually had that on my notes to ask you about your relationship with the Lord there because uh we were actually going to talk about that and we didn't jump jump to that but what was i going to ask you oh i i i don't i just use the term lightly it's easy for me to be hating on the whole time slurring his words and and then every bad point he makes where he's lying obviously lying then all the women in white get up and they give him a standing ovation and i finally just said i've had enough of and I turned it off because I was just so frustrated. I mean, he was either the best actor in the, in recent history, or well, they, they had him on Adderall or they, something. You know, you know well, they cheer more than they've ever cheered. And if you go back and watch other State of the Unions, you can tell you you, you got to do that too. You got to take time to go watch. Not you, but people have to do that. Yeah. Uh, and they cheer more than any. Like they cheered in places you're not. You, you wouldn't well, I mean, like, yeah. like, You know, you just yeah, and, so and there's just, a lot of stuff. You know. 
Yeah. Look at well, Kamala's neck. Look at Kamala. Look, my my shirt is tight. But but and if I had a fat neck, it so, could do yeah, that. I but, saw that played a lot. So you're pretty convinced yeah. that was a mask. Are you pretty convinced? Oh yeah, that that, I, I look. I mean, you can look at her. She well, look, I've look seen some, I've seen some ruffled necks, and I thought, you know, yeah, it's probably a mask. But I've seen some pretty rough necks on people. Well, so I didn't it's know. one thing to have a, a a a neck like that, and Donald Trump's does hang over. That's that's but because when you're older, this thing goes yeah, down. Yeah, but. But when your collar's like this, like if I can fix mine where it would sit like that, and then you're like, well, it'd be this side. If this side was poking out, that that ain't how your neck does. And, and when people back, when people try to justify that, that's when you know that you, that's the negative energy, whatever, stay over there. But when your when your collar's like this and your neck is is well, way I mean, out it, here. Now this is an honest question is, uh, because if it really was a mask, and I'm I'm pretty much sure that it was because the people that I trust. Are saying that's just not real. That had to be an obvious con because, or giveaway, maybe not a con, but a giveaway because otherwise you would have worn a tight neck high and covered up that thing. If you're if you're displaying it, you're telling people that are willing to look, I'm not real, aren't you? Well, and, and Kamala, yes, correct, and that's what they're trying to show people. They're trying to see yeah. how much, how many, how long will it take people to go. What in the world? Because if you take politics aside, take out all the liberal, fascist, communist, that just let's just go by looks. Kamala Harris, the real Kamala, was not an ugly, ugly woman. And I, I you know, of course, right. ugly depends That's on right. what you define as she ugly, wasn't, but, no, let, she wasn't. but she was a beautiful woman. Yeah. If you take Kamala, the pictures I show people, and then you take the one they're showing you, it's daylight and dark. Her complexion's even different. You just, right. there's certain yeah. things that say, and then her neck, she, I mean, you just kind of look at yes, every, her ears. Are, her ears are attached as well now. It's not load. And there's a lot. And then that, this stuff's all wrinkled yeah, up. And really that's what the past does. So it they're really trying was. to, it, at this point, I think if, if you were in the, in, in the driver's seat back there, the ones up here, the, the higher, gen, the, the generals and everybody who's doing this, I mean, right now, there's kind of like those guys on that TV show where they do the like, the, hey, do this and do that. Hey, trip right now. <laughs> fall. Just fall right now. Fall. <laughs> Bam. You know, and they're laughing back here. They're hysterically laughing. <laughs> That's what these people are doing. How can Americans not see this? Like yeah. how? Like yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I saw the one. <laughs> At the military academy, he was supposed to speak. Oh, yeah. He walked past the podium. That was so funny. He and walked it, by the general. He walked right by the general. So and, and like they're and they're, they're all like he he just like. It's just they make that this stuff like so an, obvious. That was like an SNL skit, and it was so funny. Well, we better end it here. I guess that's about our time. But you know, I appreciate that. It's I. This has been. There's a bunch of people who are new to this this time. This is a big old wake up call for you because you're going mask. What are you talking about mask? And start looking for these puffy things and start. If you you know, I told I went to this this pastoral friends of ours. Um, Don and Ann is their name. Not Don, yeah, Don and Ann. And I, I had told them about the mask and uh, a couple of other things, and they hadn't heard it before. By the time I got home, they were sending me copies of masks sticking out. They, they heard it. They went back and started Googling for themselves and found out that everything I was saying, my wife and I were saying, was true. And I thought, I like these guys. They didn't just take my word for it. They went that's and right. found out for themselves. If you're hearing this for the first time, you go, there's no way. That's a lie. I'm not even going to Google it. Then you can probably be happy in your dis in your own you know, ign ignorance is bliss, that expression. But if you want to Google it and start asking your patriot friends, is this possible? Did, was there really a mask that night you know, or more than one? Was that really a calm? Um, you know, and uh, if you'll do that and be intellectually honest, you'll learn a lot and you'll, you'll wake up faster, right? Any last words? Well, and that's what I tell people. You know, when I went viral on that video, August 24, 2022, it's hard to believe we're, we're working on two years. But, you know, my biggest thing in that video was was what happened before. I had even my it, my personal friends and family questioning me, not questioning me because I felt like, oh, they're questioning me. I'm talking about stuff because of this. 
And I, I, I had a sergeant who gave me permission to, to do this. Not that I needed it, but I have a sergeant that I trust really well. And, and uh, he's still an active military and, and there's certain things he can and can't say, obviously. And I don't put him in position anyway to do that because yeah. I already know enough, period. I already know enough because of, of military. But he said, man, you got a voice, you got a brain, and you got a platform. Use it. And honor all of our fallen, all of our fallen brothers and sisters that we personally know, but also honor all those who have fallen because they took the same oath that you and I did. And it yeah. doesn't matter how long you served, what you did, what you saw, where you were, and anything like that. But this is why right here, ladies and gentlemen, when people say, that I don't believe that, and I don't know if that's accurate or not, military law is military law. We have our own law. We have our own orders. All right. And we don't we don't operate off of feelings and emotions and also partisan. Once again, everything is for global humanity sake. So when you say it's not, it most certainly is. Everything that's in that book, Donald John Trump and, and not just him, he's the face of it. Multiple men and women are involved in this world operation and it most certainly is happening. And when history flips it and they show it, whatever time and point they do it, then you're going to know. Uh, that a lot of this stuff, like we said, all the negative stuff, all the, the stuff that drains your energy, the exhaustion, the frustration, the anxiety, the stress, all that stuff was was you could have controlled a little bit more because I control everything on my end. That's outside of my hands that God controls. Uh, and it most certainly is taking place. So that's good. Well, Derek, thank you so much. Hey, show that book one more time, if you will, Emily, uh, and yeah. uh, put, throw that mm -hmm. website up there, rattletrap1776.com. And the Midnight Rider, all the documents are there. And and if you absolutely can't afford it, I think we throw that other, if someone says, I just don't have the money, the documents.info, it's in raw form. Most of what's in that book is in raw form probably, or what? It's all .gov, .mil sites. As a matter of fact, a buddy of mine said it the other day, the book is not really a book. He said it's a workbook. I don't even put the references in the back of the book. Everything that every point, the reference is right there. You pull it open, put it in front of your laptop. You can type in the website. You can find it. I show it, you know, chronological order of how they would have pulled this off and how it's still being pulled off. So good. So, well, Derek, thank you for your service. Thank you for doing this with us. I appreciate it. We'll have you back many more times. It's going to be interesting the next few weeks and a few months are going to get exciting. I'll tell you what. So, we sure. find us to watch and, and, and some laughs along the way when we see some of this stuff, the masks, the bulges, all those funny things. You know, we That's might as well right. have some fun with it along the way. So all right, hey, everybody have a great day. Tomorrow is uh Yvonne Atia. She's always amazing, Got lots of good revelation from the Lord. So we'll see. And oh, I did tell the people, just give us three minutes. Talk about uh because it was actually on your list you were gonna Talk about your relationship with the Lord. I, and I said we were going to do it, and then I forgot to take you there. Give us three minutes of, of how you came to the Lord and where you are. Yeah, I tell people all the time, you know, you probably don't want to find the Lord the way I found him. Uh, but I think everybody has to find him in their own way. But, uh, you know, I grew up in church. I grew up in a, in a, a great family that, that believed in God and believed in the Lord. And, uh so I, I knew God, uh, you know, uh, theologically, I guess, would, would you, well, I guess you would say it. But and I knew I had a Bible. It wasn't like I didn't grow up with a Bible that had my name on it, engraved on it. I had all that, but I never read it. Um, I only called on God when I needed to. Um, and uh, it's always kind of like I use a metaphor. I always look back, and said, how am I doing? You know, and uh, kept it behind me, not in front of me. Um, and, you know, I, I've. I went to military. Um, I I did that with the great good, greatness of my heart, goodness of my heart for the right reasons. And uh, when my military was cut short, I struggled with that. Um, and, you know, I started blaming God on a lot of stuff. I started cussing him, blaming him, living that life. And then I had two billboard hits and country music. And you'd have thought that, that everything you chase your life for, uh, you know, you'd have thought that made me happy. It doesn't. A hit comes and goes just like that. And, of course, when you're in the top 40 and 50 and 60 on the billboard chart, uh, you know, no one knows you anymore because they only show the top 20. So all that stuff just spiraled down. And um, and I, I just kept blaming God about, you know, I do everything by etiquette, protocol, standards, you know, why me? Why this? And uh, and I got in a bad predicament one night and I didn't call out to God like I should have. And 
Uh, and uh, and I just begged him that I said, I, I just don't want to live anymore. Please take me out of here. Um, and then the next day I had a weird freak accident on an ATV and it wasn't your normal accident that would happen. I got caught on a, a, a high ravine Ooh. where if I, if I, the ground gave way, but as long as I didn't move a certain way, it wouldn't roll, but I had both the brakes pushed and it wouldn't move. But if I let go of them, it was going to roll with me down that ravine. Um, and I had to, you know, I got in a position where I had to figure out, you know, call out to God and also, am I going to fall or, you know, do I need to jump off and then hope it don't roll still or what? So, you yeah, thought that answered it, but it didn't. Um, I had to crawl out of there for like a quarter mile till my phone got service. And uh, with all my military injuries, that was a bad, bad accident on top of it. And so... When we got to ATV loaded back up, a long story short, when I left there, I went down this dirt road, had it tied on, everything on the back, and tied on all that good stuff. And I hit, as soon as I hit flat asphalt, boop, it popped all those straps and fell right off. And I'm like, this is the worst, this is the worst day of my life, boy. And I mean, I I was cussing, cussing God, cussing, cussing everything. I cussed everything that could be cussed. Um uh, and my dad came up there and helped me again and, and his uh, stepson. And, and then, uh, you know, I, I, I just was deflated and it just I, I was just tired, exhausted with life. I was there. Trust me, I've been there. If anybody says that, I've been there. I know what you're feeling. But uh, I got back in the vehicle. He drove the four-wheeler back to the camp. It's like seven miles from our hunting cabin. And so we had three vehicles three people. So one of them drove it back and my phone doesn't work like about a, in that same region. It, it works yeah. in another portion, but it doesn't work there. And I had thrown my phone in the passenger seat. Cause I was like, okay. And this is where my preacher told me, my mentor is like, no, nah, you weren't egging God on, you were egging the devil on. Uh, but when I got in a vehicle without that foil on the back, I, I, I looked up the glass and I said, all right, what now? Yeah, there's no forward on the back now. You can't mess with me now. It's just me and you. And I mean, I was, I was, I look like Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. And I know people laugh at that movie, but that movie has a lot of great no, times. That was a really, it. if you really paid attention, that was an intense confrontation between you and God. Very intense with yeah. between he and God. And that's what I had. I had a very, very, very intense, and, and, but I was really egging the devil on what my preacher said. God's always for you. He's the Bible tells you if he can be for you, who can be against you? I mean, there's a bunch of passages. Well, I was egging on the devil. I did that. My phone rang. Doesn't work there. Now, it didn't dawn on me at the time. I, I didn't even think of that. My phone rang. I looked over and it was a 615 area code, which is Nashville. Uh, so I thought it may be someone I knew. And so I just reached over and hit the button. It hit, came on in my Bluetooth and my Jeep. And, uh, and she just goes, hello. It was a sweet little voice. She said, hello, my name is Sister Janice. I'm with the Church of Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ, and God sent me to have a prayer with you. And I was like, are you serious right now? <laughs> you know, but, and I know there's people out there with their religious beliefs. I'm not here to talk about, uh, you know, the, the obviously I don't talk about uh, religious beliefs as far as the denominations and things of that nature. But, yeah. uh, but she you know, that was so surreal to me. It, it was just like someone dumped this is, knowing, this is knowing you'd ever heard of it, didn't know who you were. No, 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 no. And I'm, and I'm not a, and, and once again, I'm not a latter, I'm not a whatever latter day saint of Jesus Christ. I, I'm not a latter day saint, whatever they call. I, I don't even say I can even say it, but, uh, I, but once again, I think God uses people in certain ways. Sure, I mean, sure he does. uh, and, I thought, man, she don't know me from Adam's house cat. I just unloaded my whole life on her. I mean, I was just, boom. By the time I got done, I was streaming tears, and I couldn't even breathe. And so wow. then she goes, that's when she says, well, Derek, it's really this simple. She's like, God uses some of his strongest soldiers, but even you can't carry the weight of the cross. That's simply when you give him back your burden and you acknowledge that to him that oh, I can't wow. do this anymore. She said, that's where the one set of footprints takes place. And I really felt like she was an angel at that moment in time. My and when I walked, 
when I walked into the cabin, my dad, I'll never forget, he said, you look like you just saw a ghost because I was pale. Uh, and I'm like, I feel like I just talked to an angel. And uh, anyway, I, I apologize to my dad for all the behavior that I had, you know, my cussing, just stuff like that. I, I got to where I'd say a lot of words, you know, GD all the time. Uh, you know, and, and just yell and GD this and GD that and GD this and GD that and uh, in the in the wrong, wrong, way, very wrong mannerisms. And uh, and so I I went back to the same place where I begged God to, uh, you know, without it, I told him, I, you know, I don't feel like living anymore. And I went back over to the same spot and I said, all right, well, I've tried everything but your way. <laughs> And I've always been a 99 percenter uh, when I have been on the positive. It's still 99. And I just I think the best way to describe it is I quit rustling in my spirit. And God knows when you quit rustling in your spirit. He knows when you finally give it all to him. And uh, when I did, I said, all right, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to be. This was before. This is long before I went viral. Uh, this was November, November the 8th, 2021. And uh, so. I did. I, I I deleted all the numbers on my phone. I, I just started from scratch again. Wow. I started from complete scratch. I had, uh, you know, deleted all my stuff on social media, like as far as messages and things like that. I just I just did a complete re scratch of everything. I just is wherever I could do anything to be a, a new piece of clay, whatever it was. I just like, OK, every relationship I build now. It'll be a God sin because I'm going to keep God in front of me and I'm going to keep him here and I'm going to pray every day and I'm going to read every day. And I've done that. Uh, and it ain't easy. I tell yeah. people it's, it's not yeah. easy. Yeah. It ain't easy doing it. ain't easy like doing that and, yeah. and making and you don't want to make God a routine either. You well, don't right. want to be a routine. Sure. sure. But that's that's wow. kind of that's well, you that's did good. Story. And then that's not that's only been like three years or so. Good for you, man. God on you. That's so good. And that, you know, bless that lady. You'll see her in heaven one day, probably. And you'll say, did she ever tell you how she got your number at all or anything? The only thing she told me, which even gave me more chill bumps, because it was it was about nine. It was about nine thirty p.m. It was it was late. Hey. Um, and she said. She said, we have we, we have I, I can't remember how they get the numbers, but they yeah. but they had this roll of numbers. OK. And, she's, and after she talked to me. When she said all of what she said, that that was gave me chill. You know, she goes, and by the way, you were our last phone call tonight. Whoa, oh, man! Yeah. yeah, anyone that hears this story that doubts that that's God, you aren't paying attention. That was God setting that up for you. So, wow, wow. Well, you're... I tell people if it don't set it up for them, it doesn't matter because it was what I needed. So, yeah, you know, oh my God, it should. That's amazing. But, wow, what a yeah. testimony! What? A... Well, thanks for sharing. As fun as we had. The whole rest of the time, this was even the most meaningful of all. So good. thanks for sharing that. I did have it on my list to ask you because you had already volunteered to share that. And then I somehow spaced that. So I thought I saw it just before we signed off. All right, Derek, God bless you. Love you, man. And take it easy. Thank and you. we'll have you back on soon. So, all right, uh, Yvonne will be with us tomorrow in the morning, tomorrow morning at 11. So we'll see you all then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.